Hey, what's up YouTube? This problem, we have an infinite sum. And the question is, does the sum converge or does it diverge? I picked this problem because it has factorials everywhere, right? As a factorial in the numerator and a factorial in the denominator. Not only that, it's being squared. So how do you do this problem? How do we determine convergence or divergence? So typically, typically, when you have factorials, it's a good idea to try the ratio test. So let's try that. I haven't done this problem yet, so We'll see. So the ratio test says, if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n in absolute value, and you get L, one of three things can happen. So if L is less than 1, then the series will converge. If L is bigger than 1, then the series will diverge. And if L is equal to 1, then the test fails. There is no info via the ratio test. So in this problem, the absolute values are irrelevant. We don't really need them because there's everything's positive, right? And here is an integer. Um, so let's do it. Let's, let's start the problem and see what happens. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity. All right, so first we have to work out a sub n plus 1. So that basically means we're, we're, gonna, we're going to replace all of the n's with n plus 1's. Okay, so it'll be 2n plus 1. So parentheses, 2n plus 1 parentheses, parentheses, factorial, right? So notice the double parentheses there, right? Just being very, very careful. And then again, now we're going to replace this with n plus 1. So this is divided by parentheses n plus 1 factorial, and then that whole thing is squared. So all we've written down is a sub n plus 1, okay? So now it's being divided by a sub n. So this, this is a sub n. So we're dividing this by this. So when you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal. So it's the same as flipping it and multiplying it. So this is times n factorial quantity squared, boom, and then 2n factorial. All right, so all we've done is flip it. Let's check that very, very carefully. So the first thing we did is we plug in n plus 1 for all of the n's. Looks OK. Then we divided by a sub n's. We basically flipped it. Looks OK. Now we have to carefully simplify the factorials. So a couple things uh, to keep in mind. Well, let's just do it. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. So we can distribute the two. This will be 2n plus 2 parentheses factorial. This is a nice problem. This is going to be a good exercise in dealing with factorials. So 2n plus 2 factorial. Here we have n factorial squared. Um, I'm going to write it as n factorial times n factorial. It's not really necessary, but I'll, I'll, I'll write it. It might help us, might add some clarity later. We'll see. Then on the bottom, we have n plus 1 uh, factorial squared. That's the same thing as n plus 1 factorial. Aha! Yes, it did help. It did help. That's, you'll see it's going to cancel soon. And then here we have, we have 2n factorial. So all we did in this step was distribute the 2, 2n plus 2, and then n factorial squared is n factorial, n factorial, n plus 1 factorial squared is n plus 1 factorial, n plus 1 factorial. Okay, I don't know if you all know this, but n factorial is equal to n, n minus 1, dot, 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 3, 2, 1. So n plus 1 factorial, right, n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1, and then the 1 before it. So you subtract 1, you subtract 1 from the n plus 1. So n plus 1 minus 1 is n. And then dot, 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 3, 2, 1. Because the next one would be n minus 1, n minus 2. So it's really, it's really n plus 1, n factorial, right? That's how pros do it. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1, n factorial. Now, what about, what about the 2n plus 2? So we're going to use this, okay? The 2n plus 2 factorial, 2n plus 2 factorial is simply 2n plus 2. And the 1 before 2n plus 2 is 2n plus 1, right? You subtract 1 from the entire quantity, right? So 2n plus 2 minus 1 is 2n plus 1. Then after that, it's 2n, 2n minus 1, 2n. So that's the rest of it is 2n factorial. Because the next one is 2n. After that, it's 2n minus 1. That, that's a, precisely 2n factorial. So this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. So 2n plus 2 factorial, we're going to write it like this. So this is 2n plus 2. Uh, 2n plus 1, and then 2n factorial. And then we have n factorial, n factorial. <laughs> Ridiculous. In the denominator, all of these n plus 1 factorials are going to be n plus 1, n factorial, right? That's the first one. The next one is n plus 1, n factorial, and the next one is 2n factorial. Let me check my work, because I haven't done this yet. Let's see, so 2n plus 2 factorial 
is 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, 2n factorial. Checks. Good stuff. 2n factorial. Right, that's that. And then n factorial, n factorial, n factorial, n factorial. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1, n factorial. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1, n factorial. That stays the same. Look at this. This is what life is all about right here. <laughs> Beautiful stuff, right? And then now we have a quadratic. We have 4n squared over n squared, right? Oh, so this limit is actually, see the leading coefficient here is 4n squared. The leading coefficient here is n squared, right? If you multiply it all out. Because they have the same growth rate, right? The limit is gonna be the ratio of the leading coefficients. So four over one. So this is gonna be equal to four over one, which is equal to four. Oh, oh, look at that, it's bigger than one. So our series diverges. So it diverges, let's put div by the ratio test. What a nice problem. That's it. Until next time, take care. See you later.